Hey guys, it's Grandmaster Mac Molnar back with another video here. Um, welcome. In today's video, we're going to be talking about an opening. It's going to be called the Sveshnikov, Sveshnikov Sicilian, and I have it planted here so that you can see right upon arrival. And um, this is a great opening. Um, I'm ma mainly going to be focusing on this from Black's point of view, talking about some of the reasons why you might want to play it and um, some of their ideas, but also I'll cover some things that you could use for white in case you face this. Um, the first thing that I just wanna to do is, is walk you through the moves here. So we would start just with a regular Sicilian defense. So it starts with e4 and move one for white, black will play c5, and we reach this kind of unique pawn formation which comes up here in just a moment. So we have e5 at this point, attacking the knight on d4, and yeah, it's, it's kind of an interesting, an interesting variation here because it's, it, it reaches positions that are not very typical for, for the Sicilian defense. You might, you might, if you've seen the Sicilian, maybe you've, you're familiar with some variations like um, perhaps the dragon, which is kind of has its own signature kind of styling with a move like G6. This is a pretty common one. We'll also have the, the Nidor variation, which, which gets seen like this, but the Sveshnikov reaches pretty unique pawn structure here after um, this e5 move coming up. And if this looks a little unique, maybe you're thinking, oh, is it is it actually trustworthy? Is it a good opening? And um, the answer is absolutely without a doubt. Uh, the, the biggest advertisement I, I could give for this opening would be just telling you that in, in Magnus Carlsen's uh, last world championship match against Fabiano Caruana, he actually employed the Sveshnikov variation uh, with black every single game of the match, which <laughs> I don't think you could have possibly a, a better advertisement for the quality of an opening or, you know, making a statement about the credibility of, of a certain, of a certain opening. So this, you know, th this is very high quality among the, the best openings you could play with black. Um, one of the, the other good things about it is that it is very active. So black in a lot of positions will get good play with their pieces, and um, there are some downsides though, which we're gonna talk about. Um, so naturally after this e5 move here, which is was, which is kind of the, the signature move, the, the knight's under attack, and white has a couple of ways of responding here. So they could go knight b3, they could go knight f3, f5, and knight b5 are all the main moves, with, with basically knight b, b5 being the absolute most critical move. Um, <clears throat> From, from White's point of view, what they're gonna be looking to do is is occupy this weakened d5 square here. And notice that as soon as you play e5, you know, uh, as, as you learn or very early on, pawns will never move backwards. So yeah, this pawn's, this pawn's stuck on e5 here. This, this, pawn, this square on d5 is, uh, is really juicy for White's pieces, um, especially this knight. So White will oftentimes fight for control of this square, try to occupy it with, with their knight, and then hope for just kind of like a positionally smothering game against black. And if black doesn't get the counterplay that they need, that can definitely happen. So um, let's start with just some some sidelines here. So something like knight b3 or knight f3, you could you could handle in, in similar fashion. What you'd be looking to do is just pin the knight on uh, b4 here. And you know, the nice thing about playing e5 is that it's at least a tempo move from black's point of view. So you're able to quickly develop and this puts a lot of pressure on white quickly, especially in the, in the center here with e4. So if white were to defend it, you just blast through with d5 and you just open things up. Your, your bishop's cleared to be developed. You have a lot of pressure on the center and something like pawn takes, for example, you'll capture back and you know, black has hardly, you know, I mean, black is maybe slightly better already. <laughs> I was gonna say you know, like black doesn't have a care in the world, but it's even maybe better than that, so. Yeah, this this is this is an, an annoying pin. Something like uh, bishop d2, knight takes, and then you can you can bring your bishop back, and you have a nice center, healthy pawn structure, good position. <clears throat> so these kind of knight retreats back to f3 and b3 are not very appealing for white. If the knight goes back here, you'll do something similar and quickly apply pressure. Also, you can even you can even take and then do something like d6. That's fine as well. But I don't I don't necessarily think there's anything wrong with d5. This is going to give you a fine game as well. So regardless, this is not a very testing variation from White's point of view. 
Without a doubt, they should be playing uh, knight b5. But let's cover knight f5 as well. It's worth it just to be really careful and take a look at all reasonable options. And, you know, this this move has some, some you know, if, if black doesn't respond carefully, it has some nice uh, potential upside here. Number one is that it heads towards this weak in d6 square. And if black were to play something similar kind of along the lines of some of the main lines, um, maybe this knight even wraps around heading closer to, to the d5 square. Maybe it finds a good home there coming up. So black should keep this in mind and, and just immediately kind of strike the center right away. They should play d5. And this move weakens white's control of the center. It opens up this bishop to help pressure f5. And yeah, it just leads to a very comfortable game at this point. And white needs to be careful not to just let the center just completely crumble here. But um, they, they should take and, and allow, you know, basically the, the whole uh, center to be liquidated. But yeah, it's it's better than just letting black just crash through just with pawn advances or capturing on e4. So they they should uh, let let this all happen, and black can capture back here or even potentially trade. But either way, um, black's quite comfortable. Now I'm just gonna leave this here for a moment so you can see it. But you know, not much to be worried about here. You know, black's got well developed pieces, hold of the center. You know, look, looks completely good. So that's going to bring us to the most challenging move, which is knight b5. And it's really important here that black is mindful of this move. Uh, it's possible to let it happen, but it's not the traditional way to, to play it. It's not what uh, Magnus Carlsen was uh, resting his hopes on. So you should play d6, block the square, and now white has a few options. Um, one move that got played actually a few times in the, in the game, um, the match between... Caruana and Carlson was this move knight d5. So this is actually, it's it's a much more modern move. It has kind of, um, I guess you could say, the approval of, of some chess engines because it results in some pawn structures here where white gets a little bit more space. So usually, well, not usually, black must take. They absolutely have to get rid of this because, you know, there there's some some big threats here. So they must take, and white will take back with a pawn. Um, so this move has some trade-offs. Number one, um, white's kind of gaining some space, knocking this knight back from c6, so it's gaining some time as well. However, this chronic weakness that black has on d5 has now been filled with a pawn, so it's not it's not a, a square available for white's pieces, and no longer is this concern that black has um, throughout the, the course of the game. And um, what, black's going to have to retreat their knight, but both re knight retreats here are fine. They could go um, knight e7, but the, the more popular move is knight b8. Um, I think after knight e7, one thing that you, you just want to keep in mind is that the move c4 actually creates this, this wicked threat of queen a4. And c4 is a part of white's overall game plan here because it helps to um, create some, some play on the side of the board where they have the pawn majority, they have more space here, and it's generally where white is going to be kind of fighting to make progress throughout this game. So you need to make sure you, you're really aware of this queen a4 move. For instance, if you play a6 trying to knock away the knight, already queen a4 is really, really troubling. Um, with, <laughs> with, a, uh, with a clear uh, problem here if you try to break the pin or something like that. So you have to watch out for this. Even, even queen d7 doesn't work. I mean... You can take this one. You could you could play knight c7. Even I mean knight d6 looks kind of nice right away. You, you get this as well, maybe taking and then taking here. I mean it, it's all falling apart. So you, you have to make sure that doesn't happen. Most people choose knight b8 actually, even though it looks a little more passive. It it actually it's kind of on its way towards a better future. It can head to d7 to c5 where there's a nice square, and it also you know obviously isn't going to run into any of these as many of these problems. For instance, if if, if white plays c4, um, black can play bishop e7 and quickly castle. And yeah, without kind of diving too deep into all these variations here, I'll just kind of give you kind of sense of how the play will develop. Usually white is playing on the queen side because they have more space here, as I mentioned. And 
black is going to be focusing their attention on the king side here. So they have a, a pawn majority on the king side and in the center, and a nice little pawn wedge that can kind of get going if they if they play f5 here. Also, once they play f5, usually they're going to bring the knight around behind it or even into c5. And white has some ways of dealing with it, but just a sample variation here would be something like um, castle, castle, um, a6, and then yeah, white might even try something like f4 here, for example, <clears throat> just to slow black down on the king side. But this isn't so bad. Black can play knight, knight d7 here, for example, and help cover this square, um, heading towards this one as well. They're going to play something like bishop f6 in the upcoming moves, and eventually they may take and have this nice diagonal for the bishop, some center squares for the knight, and it's approximately even. But um, <clears throat> the type of game that that is is a good fight because both sides have their 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 clear advantages on uh, different parts of the board, and it can lead to a a nice struggle. So that's one of the reasons why Caruana played a a variation like this uh, in the in the match because it does create a uh, like a long struggle here with kind of opposite sides um, advantages. The move he was he was playing, I think, maybe entirely in that match when he reached this position was was a4. So this is kind of another modern move, and the thinking behind this would be if Black, I think, plays a, kind of a slightly questionable move here like a6, White is hoping that this a, a4 move is actually going to provide a bunch of posi positional benefits here coming up. Um, <clears throat> from what I remember, I think it's, uh, yeah, I think it's knight a3 here with the idea of hope, hopefully heading towards uh, c4 and then playing a5 and locking up this, this wonderful square on b6. One thing I was just checking really quickly before uh, mentioning the line was I was slightly concerned about um, queen a5, but yeah, at the, at the very least, there's c3 here protecting this pawn. Oops, sorry. <clears throat> yeah, so that's covered. And then knight a, knight a3 to c4 is coming with a tempo, and it's, this is miserable. So black doesn't want to let all this happen. They're just wasting time. <clears throat> not to mention, well, yeah, bishop d2 is not going to work because of uh, queen here probably. But yeah, so c3 works fine, and everything is good. Um, so black shouldn't do that. Uh, a6 actually turns out to be a mistake here. So what, what black should do is they should play uh, bishop b7, and then force white to play some kind of move that's going to support this pawn push here. Um, the reason why white doesn't do it right now is because black will play a6, and the knight cannot head back to a3 because that will break the rook's connection to a5, allowing black to take here. So, yeah, black in this case should just wait, hold off for, for a little bit until white plays some kind of preparatory move. They, black can play as many useful moves as they want. In the meantime, they still have stuff like f5 available. So eventually white needs to kind of commit to, commit to this idea. So a move like bishop d2, for example, is very, very principled and consistent with what um, white has been doing. So a6 gets played. Now is a good time for it. Notice that you know this is now a threat for sure, so we we knock the knight back and then play a5 and, and slow them down, kind of try to claim some squares on the queen side and then, at a good moment here in the near future, you, you can play something like f5. Yeah, so I think this is all pretty comfortable. <clears throat> all right, so now let's get to the main line at least. So, we we had this position. I'll I'll, I'll go back to this kind of starting point. I'll actually just even go from the beginning, just so we can see it one more time. So it's e4, c5, knight f3, knight c6, d4, take, take, and then knight f6. So once you bring out your both of your knights, you play e5 here. White should play knight b5, heading towards this critical square. You stop that. And then, and then um, the main move here is bishop g5. I think kind of by a long shot, although knight d5 in in, in uh, recent times is kind of gaining some popularity. So let's let's uh, talk about bishop g5. This is the key move, and it's very very principled. It develops a piece. It helps fight for the control of this square by pinning the knight and threatening even just to capture it. So it's very very logical, and is connected with the overall plan of white using this square. So black must without a doubt stop this move somehow. Um, Actually, I should say they need to stop the threat that this move creates, which is going to be bringing the knight into c7, 
with this massive fork. <clears throat> just a total uninvited invasion that that black on no like should never allow. Um, so you should play a6. Just knock this knight back. And um, yeah, after this move, you know I I kind of trying to stress the fact that this this opening creates some positional problems for black, like this square on uh, d5, but it provides tons of activity for black's pieces. Also, this knight on a3 is is a uh, w misplaced piece, and it's going to take white at least a few turns to get it back into the center or, or find something meaningful for, for it to do. So in the, in the meantime, black tries to generate a quick activity with their pieces, counterplay against the center, and it, it, it leads to a, some really interesting struggles in the game. Um, so white has two main moves here. They can go knight d5, or they can take here with the bishop. So I'm going to talk about this move last. I think um, knight d5 we'll, we'll cover first. Um, so this does introduce some kind of extra pressure here. Maybe it makes it more appealing to take. So what uh, black just defends it, prepares the castle. Also, this is now a serious threat because there is the uh, option to take afterwards. So white will usually uh, take here on f6. Some other moves are possible, but I just want to give you a quick overview of the main lines. So black will take back with the bishop. And then white has plans like c3 or c4 even to help bring this knight back into the game. And from here, black will do things like castle, maybe bishop g5 to, to put the bishop on a better diagonal. And maybe once the bishop's here, you can shoot for things like f5 or um, <clears throat> yeah, things like that, put the bishop on e6. Yeah, I don't want to kind of like overload you with, with tons and tons of stuff here, but yeah, that's a general the general game plan. Um, <laughs> Sorry, that is, that's my dog. If, I don't know if you can hear it, but he, uh, he's, I guess he's making his, his debut on these videos. Um, so let's see here. Uh, Bishop takes f6 is a really serious move as well. Um, uh, yeah, black's going to take back with a pawn here. This is important. Queen takes doesn't work out so well because it walks into this tempo move here and... I believe it's c4 here, which causes some problems. It's just white is too quick to open up the queen side here, and it uh, results in in uh, some some problems that black won't be able to to happily solve here. So you should take back with a pawn, and I think that this um yeah this probably like if you just take take a a glimpse at this pawn structure and all these weak squares around here, I I I could see how somebody might just be immediately turned off to this whole idea. Like what is black doing this? This looks um, this this looks like positionally criminal to allow such a weak square here or something like this. But actually, Black has fantastic fantastic counterplay ready. Not only do they get to undermine the uh, the e4 pawn here with a move like f5, but they actually get to do it twice because after you go f5 and take, you can hit the center an extra time with with a kind of um like this avalanche of pawns in the center. Plus, this bishop is going to come to g7 where. Eventually, it's going to be a good piece once these these pawns clear out of the way. So it's actually a really exciting opening. I can give you a, a very quick example of how this went very wrong for White in a game between, um, I think it was Weiser and Lev Sakis. Lev Sakis is playing the White pieces. He was a grandmaster from the Soviet Union who was extremely strong. And I think Weiser was, he was also a great player, but um, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of qu amazing how quick... Um, this game is decided here. Just, I think Sakis might have mi mixed up his lines. He's playing the white pieces. He played knight d5 here, which is completely normal. Bishop g7. Also, the immediate f5 is a great move. Uh, it tends to lead to, to, to some different types of variations. Depends on which which move you prefer and, um, yeah, like which which ones you immediately want to be dealing with. But yeah, it puts immediate pressure on the center, and the the, the play is similar. Black's going to go bishop g7 castle, and then probably take and play f5 again. That's, that's at least the goal. But black started with bishop g7 is slightly different. Uh, bishop d3, knight e7, fighting for control of this square, trying to just immediately eliminate the the, uh, the strong piece here. <clears throat> Loosen the grip that white has control over the center. So they trade, and then c4. So c4 is fine, but um, one thing that black usually does is they're, they're not really interested in taking because it's going to bring the knight back into the game. So they're, you know, this opening is played with the intent for active counterplay. So they, at the, the correct move here is actually just f5. So you just ignore 
ignore this uh this concern on the queen side and you just try to overpower your opponent in the center and <clears throat> yeah for people who like to play energetic openings this is this is a great fit for you so um the immediate well let's let's say white were to just play kind of this uh this natural looking move the immediate problem is going to be e4 with uh this threat to the the bishop this attack on the pawn with a fork coming up so that's pretty pretty unfortunate uh if if black excuse me if white were to take th i think we'll, we're going to see some problems which are similar to uh to what happens in the game i don't want to give away black's best move yet because i'll give you a chance to find it but um in the game black, uh, white played queen h5 and, and basically after one more move uh the game was over literally after one more move so why don't you take a, a, a shot here at trying to find it? The, the, just remember the key is is playing for activity in this opening. You're just trying to open up as many files and lines for those fantastic bishops that you're going to have. So anyway, give it some give it some thought here. Try to find black's best move. Uh, so the move that was found and played in the game was d5. Spectacular. Just what a position here with these um, these center pawns. Just just such a truly over overwhelming pawn mass in the center and it's variations like this like when, once you see it it's hard to uh at least hard for me I, I guess i consider myself a uh, active player it's hard not to want to try out an opening like this but yeah white's white's in really bad shape here uh if they take with this pawn there is uh e4 coming um not to mention there you know the main point actually of of d5 actually i, sh I should say it's not it's not e4 there um, I'll, I'll address that in a second, but yeah, the, the main the main benefit of playing d5 in the first place for Black was to open up this check. This this is this is a key point. Once the, once the the king um, is in check, Black's going to take with a with an additional double attack. It's it's really a nightmare. Um, I actually should have point should have uh, pointed out probably this is not this is actually not a worry for White because they could castle. I mean, it's not it's not great. I mean, maybe this. You know, this is still an issue, but it's it's not quite as clear as I was originally uh, thinking. Maybe something like this. So, causing causing some issues for now at least. Um, but at least there's queen b4, bishop b2 as uh, as additional um, opportunities here. But the the main problem um, was that in the game he he took with a c pawn and and black captured here and white resigned. So. A very fast game between two really strong grandmasters, but it, it shows some of the potential danger here that White faces. Um, the reason he resigned is because the bishop is not really able to take queen before. And now not not just a double attack; it is a triple attack because the bishop is is unguarded here. So pretty amazing, pretty amazing game, which shows off some of the um, the beauty and energy of this this opening here. But you better make sure that you, you really uh, you really get those pieces active, otherwise there can be some problems with with a square like this, permanently in White's control. So anyway, I hope you you in, in, enjoy this video. I know I definitely like like making um, opening videos and things like this, especially on openings which are very exciting like this one. So um, you know, one last reminder: it's a great it's a played by the greatest player in the world and trusted at the highest stakes. So definitely can give this a shot if you're interested. Um, so hope to see you for more of our uh, future videos. Uh, if you liked it, come check out the, the other options we have at grandmastermac.com. We have lots of videos like this and you can um, see more of them. Like and share our video because it helps us create more content. The more people that uh, are interested, the better. But um, hopefully you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Take care.